Cue the drama and chalk up for a wild ride through Snooker's stormiest moments. From Alex Higgins' legendary outburst to Ronnie O'Sullivan's rebellious antics, get ready for a breakneck journey through the most biggest tantrums in snooker history. And, um, well, let's see how I would you do with that, because I am planning. Whenever Alex Higgins, a.k.a. The Hurricane, was around on the snooker scene, controversy was never normally far away. He was one of the most talented and entertaining players ever to pick up a cue, and is widely known for inspiring the sport's meteoric rise in popularity during the 1970s. But at the time of his defeat by Steve James in the opening round of the 1990 World Championship, just eight years after celebrating his iconic victory with wife Lynn and baby Lauren, Higgins was heading for self-destruction. Along with serious financial problems away from the table, he was also facing severe disciplinary action after threatening to have Northern Ireland teammate Dennis Taylor shot during the World Cup earlier that season. An evidently intoxicated Higgins, who remained in the empty arena long after the conclusion of his match, punched WPBSA press officer Colin Randall upon arriving for his press conference before delivering a lengthy slurred tirade in which he announced his retirement from professional play. The Hurricane was subsequently banned from competitive snooker for one year and stripped of all his ranking points, effectively spelling the end of his career. I'm going to know. Let's see how I would do with that. Because I am planning. something like this, he's got to do it in the exhibition, not, not in a match, a professional match. You know? I play left-handed for the day, so, you know, it's, it's just as if I get bored, and I, and I was bored. It was all too much for the Canadian. He walked off at the end. Another of Snooker's mavericks, Ronnie O'Sullivan's ability to perform to the highest standard using both hands, is just one of the reasons he's regarded as the most naturally gifted player ever to grace the modern game. The Rocket first showcased this talent during his opening round clash with Alain Robidoux in 1996, although rather unwisely. The Canadian was far from impressed, however, and refused to shake the 20-year-old's hand at the match's conclusion, later accusing him of being disrespectful and showboating. Not in a match, a professional match. You know, when you do an exhibition, you're allowed to do that, but when you're playing a professional match, you shouldn't do that. A rebellious O'Sullivan responded that he could play better with his left hand than Rabadou could with his right. Well, you know, there'd be no contrast. You, you know, you got to have the good and, you know, the, the bad That wasn't the only bust-up O'Sullivan was involved in during Snooker's Blue Riband event that year. Prior to his quarterfinal showdown with John Higgins, the Rocket was involved in an argument with assistant tournament director Mike Ganley after he was asked to remove a guest from the press room because he did not meet the dress requirements. Following the altercation, O'Sullivan would land a headbutt on Ganley, the man who would come to his rescue by lending him a pair of shoes 19 years later. The 20-year-old was threatened with disqualification, but was eventually cleared to play in the tournament. However, he was fined 20,000 pounds for the incident while receiving a suspended two-year ban from the sport. Another of Snooker's extroverted characters, Australia's Quinton Han, was renowned for his volatile temperament, while his unconventional pool-style break-off method was deemed unsportsmanlike in large quarters of the game. His top 16 status was on the line when he faced Andy Hicks in the first round of the 2004 World Championship. Former Crucible semi-finalist Hicks eventually prevailed as a 10, four winner during a tense showdown. That tension threatened to boil over when Hicks remarked 
that's you out of the top 16, as the players shook hands, with referee Lori Annandale forced to intervene and prevent them from potentially coming to blows. Han reportedly labeled Hicks short and bald and unsuccessfully challenged him to a boxing match. Having contested the Crucible final in 2008 and 2012, Ronnie O'Sullivan and Ali Carter prepared to do battle again in Sheffield in the 2018 second round. Seeking his first victory over the Rocket in competitive play, Carter ramped up the tension ahead of the showdown, criticizing his opponent's attention-seeking media antics while suggesting he received favorable treatment by the snooker authorities. That appeared to carry through to the match, and with the captain leading 11, 8, the pair hit into each other's shoulders as O'Sullivan returned to his seat. A brief exchange ensued with the five-time champion suggesting he was avenging an earlier barge from his opponent, who he labeled Mr. Angry, before referee Paul Collier stepped in to calm the situation. Undeterred, Carter went on to close out the match, 13, nine, and book his place in the quarterfinals. <clears throat> oh, that's, that's, just play on you. That's yeah. unusual. All right. Uh, in a moment of sheer vexation, Tony Drago faced the music of his own making. The scene unfolded in a way that was almost theatrical, with Drago delivering a self-reprimanding slap, a physical manifestation of his internal turmoil. You could see the hope draining from his eyes, replaced by the stark reality of defeat. It was a pivotal moment where everything hung in the balance, and then, just like that, it tipped the wrong way. For those brief seconds, it was as if time stood still. You could feel the weight of disappointment settling on Drago's shoulders, a burden made heavier by the public nature of his distress. And that's a wrap. From cue cracking clashes to pocket pounding showdowns, we've seen it all. Remember, in the wild world of snooker, emotions can be as unpredictable as a trick shot. So keep your cues cool your aim true on that subscribe button and like the video so we keep bringing you videos like this.